Hello. I wanted to make a short video talking about customized UVs because I've learned about these recently and I think they're interesting. Um, the main trick is that you can set a material to have a custom UV input um, and when you do that it changes the UV sampling um, on a texture sample uh, in the vertex shader. It does math in the vertex shader which is then used on the pixel shader, right? So you can move calculations uh, from one shader, the vertex, to the pixel shader or vice versa um, with the, the goal in mind of performance, right? Um, and on mobile, it talks down here that any texture sample that manipulates texture co coordinates in any way takes a slow path. These are called dependent texture fe fetches. If you use the custom UV inputs, you can implement tiling or world space texture mapping while keeping on the texture fetches independent, which is fast. Um, also, um, a pixel shader on mobile is with half precision floats by default, um, which can look bad. Um, and if you use custom UVs, then you can get around this because the vertex shader apparently does UVs with full precision. All right, well, let's think about, let's make a little material to demonstrate this. Um, so let's make a world space grid material. So first thing I'm going to do is make it unlit. And I'm going to turn off the ray trace shadows, turn off light map directionality. Uh, doesn't really matter that much. Uh, the flip precision mode is going to be the default, which will be half precision on mobile. So assuming we were doing this on mobile, um, so the first thing we'd want to do would be to have a texture sample of a material. I'm just going to pop that in here. Um, I'm using the uh, a default grid material, which is the same one that's in the engine with linear color. So we could just set that to a mess of color, right? <laughs> which looks pretty ugly, but this is just for testing. All right, so if we do that and we make a cube stick it in the world, put that grid material on it. All right, so if we expand our cube, let's scale it by to three by three. You'll see our grid is not world space, right? It is just UV space right now. Okay, so how would we make it um, in world space? Let's get world position. All right, and what I want to do is only measure world position in the Y and the uh, Z direction to build like a wall UV um, in world space. But I want it the, these directions to fit along the actual object so that if I rotate it like this, uh, you know, the, the, um, the grid isn't in world space and looks weird, right? Um, well, let's just go ahead and create it in world space and we can see what will happen. So let's just divide that by 100, put that into UVs, right? Um, and right now we're using, um, oh, yeah, we're, remember we're using, uh, this is all in the pixel shader right now. Okay. Okay, so we're using uh, X and Y uh, temporarily here, so you can see, but if I rotate it, look, yeah because these are in world space. Um, we're not getting exactly what I wanted. What I want to do, so I'm going to make two vectors. Like I was saying, one I'm going to point in the Y direction, one I'm going to point in the Z direction. And I'm going to transform those from local to world space. All right, so this, this way, I can get distance and world space in these directions from the local space orientation. Okay. Uh, normalize those. Normalize. Now I'm going to use a dot product just 
Hello, for a second. The world position. I'm going to append vector to create my UVs, right? That looks pretty freaking weird. It's because I botched this part. Let's do this. Then, there it is. All right. Okay, so now you see we got some world space thing happening in YZ. So let's say this so we can see it. All right, that's what I'm interested in. So you can see if this was a wall, it's now showing me uh, how wide the wall is, um, whereas each one of these blocks is 50 centimeters, right? Because I think the block's 100, so times three would be 300, so um, that would make sense if we make this four by four. Uh, right, so we're getting world space measurement, and if I rotate the object, still getting world space measurement, right? Um, of course, if we wanted this to be a floor or something, you'd have to rotate it like this or change um, this to maybe this instead. Right, so that it's on top. But regardless, now we can rotate it, we can scale it, and we still get world space distance on that object. But we haven't got to custom UVs yet. So uh, if we were doing this on a mobile platform, or even in general, um, we can go over here to world space grid, and we can type custom UV. Set that to one. All right. And then, so we have 115 and 255, if you see there. Now if we disconnect that and connect this to here, we go to 97 and 275. So it looks like it just moves the instructions to the vertex shader, right? Which is what you would expect. And it looks just the same, right? So what would what would really be happening here is this math, which would be half precision, if I did this, would all run in half precision on the pixel shader um, on mobile, um, which could create some weird looking artifacts. Whereas if I move it here to custom UV, it's running on the vertex shader at full precision. Um, and I mean, if you imagine this is going to be cheaper in general because the vert this is run uh, per vertex, right? So if there's not many vertices, that's going to be a heck of a lot cheaper than running it per pixel. Um, yeah, so anyway, I just wanted to show that. And I think in general, you should probably use these custom UV inputs um, whenever you're fiddling with UVs if it makes you know, sense to, if you don't have a million different things you're doing that um, need would need like 100 UV channels, as long as you keep the number of custom UV channels down to a reasonable amount, I think you should always run in something here and then use it there, uh, like that. Anyway, let me know if you know of other cool optimizations, uh, especially for mobile uh, or, you know, VR um, for materials. Thanks.